Hello everyone and welcome to the NetAtWork Sage X3 video series. Today we're going to be looking at inter-site transfers and how to create transfers and different options we have in terms of moving inventory uh, between warehouses within the system. Uh, for the purpose of this video we're going to assume that uh, you already know how to set up companies. We can set up multiple companies within X X3. All of those companies can pertain to a localization depending on the country you're in. And uh, within each company, we can uh, generate or create sites uh, and an unlimited uh, number of sites within each company. These sites could be corporate headquarters or they could be physical warehouses. If you have a site that is a campus that it might have multiple buildings and warehouses, you can actually subdivide a site into individual warehouses uh, to segregate inventory between those uh, buildings. But for the purposes of our uh, demo today, we're going to assume that a site is an actual warehouse, as most of our customers are set up that way. So let's begin. The very first thing we're going to do uh, before we start the transactions is go to our stock by site and see what we have available for a given item in a given warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm logged into warehouse NA011, and I'm going to put in the product that I want to move or that I've moved. And I'm going to do a search. And I can see that I have a, a number uh, 20,000 in this warehouse. If I uh, delete the warehouse filter and do another search, I can see that I have this item uh, located throughout multiple warehouses in my uh, system. So what I want to do is move inventory from uh, my truck into this other warehouse. So the first option is to do an after the fact transfer. This is where we've already moved inventory and we simply want to tell the system to reflect that in, uh, in the database. So the way that we do that is through this uh, function called intersite transfers. When we click on that intersite transfers function, uh, we're going to go ahead and generate a new transaction. So we're going to click on our plus sign to do our new transaction. The system already knows that I'm uh, uh, living in warehouse NA011 because that's the warehouse that I've logged into. We can also define different document types uh, for this type of transaction. Where right now we're doing an intersite stock movement. So I'm going to select that. And uh, we're allowed to tell the system if we if this movement is associated with a project uh, such as it moving inventory for a new warehouse I can uh, I can create a project for that and associate it with that project also I can uh, for reporting purposes I can group transactions by a transaction group uh, in this case just an internal transaction uh, and then I put in my destination site so NA012 Uh, the system knows the address of that warehouse. If that site would have belonged to a sister company, then the system would have automatically flagged it as an intercompany transaction and knows that we need to invoice that company for that stock movement. But because these both of these warehouses exist within the same company, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and leave that unchecked. And we're going to uh, select the product that we want to move, or that we did move, and when I select the product, I'm going to come down here to my stock selection where I can see all of the locations where that item exists in the uh, uh, source warehouse. So I know that I don't want to select a quality trans uh, location because these quantities are uh, being inspected currently. But I do have a stocking location where I can move some, I have some available quantity to move. So I'm going to go ahead and select that location. And now you notice that the item appears down here at the bottom of the screen. Now I can move the entire quantity or I could uh, change that to say, oh, I really only wanted to move a thousand units uh, from that uh, 19,000 uh, that I have there. So I say save that. The system will generate uh, a transaction uh, ID. And that is really all we need to do. When I exit out of this warehouse, the system created the transfer, depleted inventory in NA011, and added it to NA012. If we wanted to take a look at the result of that, I can go once again to my stock by site entry, and I will put in my item. And when I do a search, I can see that I now have 
uh, about a thousand less and if I uh, look at all warehouses I can now see that I have a thousand uh, that were just moved into uh, that uh, that NA012 uh, warehouse and I, I guess I have uh, two other that are pending um, so the total is a thousand two but I have a thousand moved to my internal stock within the warehouse NA012 now that is if again if we wanted to do a inter uh, site after the fact transfer but X3 also allows us to do uh, a three-step transfer uh, which is a bit more sophisticated it is where a, um, the receiving warehouse requests inventory uh, as like a with a PO and uh, instead of doing a PO to a supplier it would do a PO to an existing where uh, an existing warehouse uh, the the uh, the source warehouse would then receive that PO and receive it as a sales order and they would be able to pick pack and ship that order much the same way that they would pick pack and ship a customer order so how do we do that when I go to my, um, uh, let's just go to my purchase order uh, function. And we're going to create a new PO. And we know that we're in our uh, source uh, warehouse right now. If this warehouse needed inventory from NA012, it would simply put uh, the supplier code that is tied to that warehouse. In this example, uh, those two have the same code, but they don't have to. These could be a, the supplier code could be different than the warehouse code. Uh, so it knows, uh, the system recognized that this supplier, NA012, which is uh, my uh, bike and toy products uh, warehouse, is actually a sister warehouse within the same company. So the system automatically flagged this purchase order as an inter-site order. If I scroll down to the lines, I can type in the product that I want to uh, place an order with. Put in my quantity, and I would save that. Now, because the system understood that it was a intersite transfer, the system will automatically generate a sales order in my other warehouse in NA012. So the system created uh, my PO, but it also generated a sales order. Uh, within the uh, uh, for that customer in my NA012 warehouse. So if I close out of this uh, screen here and go into my uh, sales orders function, when I switch to uh, my NA012 site, if I do a, a search for transactions that were made today I can click on the latest transaction and as I scroll down here to my lines I can see that that product for that quantity was generated uh, and it's shipping uh, from NA012 going to uh, NA011 which is the site that requested that inventory so now this is a sales order it is a flagged as a um, inter-site type of order. So when I the warehouse pick, packs, and ships this order, then the other warehouse can automatically generate a receiving type of transaction. Now, this is a way to do uh, these uh, three-step transfers uh, manually. However, they can also be done uh, using our enterprise planning tool. So if we go to our enterprise planning tool, one of the functions within our planning is the ability to do intersite transfers. And if we tell the system that we want to generate any intersite transfers related to NA011, the warehouse that we're uh, sitting in, we can say search and the system will go and find 
all of the transfer orders that have already been uh, planned as well as suggested orders for other products that it finds necessary. And these are done using our replenishment option. We can tell the system that we, uh, in this warehouse, we want to have a minimum stock of a certain quantity, and the system will uh, then find if we have uh, uh, don't have enough within that warehouse, the system will recommend or suggest to do transfers from one warehouse to another. Now, these are suggested orders, so uh, the system is simply going to recommend something, and then if we wanted to uh, click on the ellipses, we can go ahead and plan that order uh, and actually issue uh, that transaction over to the warehouse. We can, of course, change the quantity if we disagree with uh, the quantity that, uh, that is being requested, as well as the dates. And, uh, and, and we can uh, generate that request or generate that order directly. And now we get a log reading that that system uh, was generated, that, that uh, supplier uh, was referenced, which is on my other warehouse, and that a transfer was generated uh, for uh, that warehouse and the subsequent uh, sales order was created in that, uh, that warehouse. So the system will do the mirror transactions automatically via an intersite replenishment tool. and it firmed up that, that order as well. In a subsequent uh, uh, video, uh, we can uh, then see not only how to uh, transfer inventory between warehouses, but also how to replenish uh, pick locations from within an existing warehouse so we can move stuff from a overstock to a picking location as well. Thank you.